Hello, this is Tony Baker from Apollo Raw Games. I wanted to bring you guys a short video about magnetic maps in Tabletopia and how to use and implement them. Uh, magnetic maps will allow you to snap components to your different regions in your game. Um, it can make cleanup uh, and setup a lot easier. So I wanted to go ahead and show you uh, how to do that. So we're going to dive in here. We do all of our prototyping in PowerPoint, so I'm continuing to do that here. If you do your power, if you do your prototyping in some other uh, platform or method um, and proficient with it, I'm sure you can achieve the same results that I'm showing here um, with that method as well. So we can go ahead and get rid of all these extraneous details I don't need, um, like these words. And then any magnetic areas, or sorry, any areas that are not a magnetic must be black. So all this background here, we're going to fill in um, to make it black. We need to make sure all of our borders are also black. So like that. All right. Now, any magnetic areas that you have need to be colored in, and depending on that color, is going to change how uh, it interacts with objects. So, for instance, if we make this one red, again, making sure our border is black, it'll make sure any objects are face up. Conversely, if we make this one blue, again, making sure our border is black, it'll make it face down. Now, you need to be careful because Tabletopia look at exact colors. So if you actually look at this blue here, it's not actually blue. So if we go over to more colors here, look at this RGB here. Um, this is not blue. In order to be blue, it has to be 0, 0, 2, 5, 5. Okay? And you notice that looks bluer, so to speak. All right. Now, any other color will simply keep the face up or face down orientation the same. Um, and it doesn't matter what color it is. So we're going to leave this one white. And I'm going to demonstrate by making this one green that um, they pretty much work the same. They do work the same. Making that border black. All right. Now, if you drop a component on a magnetic area um, and it is upside down uh, or right side up or however orientation it is, it'll, it will snap that way. Now, there is a way to manipulate that. For instance, if we wanted everything in this um, white box to be right side up, all we need to do is, is add a line from the center to the edge. And this will be the top of our component. Now, this line must be exactly one pixel width. So in PowerPoint, that is one point. So we're going to increase that to one point. And the color cannot be the same color of the magnetic area or black. So any other color works. This blue works. So if you want to use green or anything else, it would work as well. Now you notice that I'm done. My, mag my, my magnetic map is completed. Um, and um, if you watched any of my other Tabletopia videos, you would know how I go ahead and upload that into Tabletopia. But I will show you here real quick. We're going to save this as a PDF file. And then we're going to open that file in GIMP. Like so. We're going to do image, auto crop, control E to export, and we're going to create a PNG file from that. Like so. All right. Now, if we go into Tabletopia here, I've already actually created this object, but I will show you how I created it. Um, I'll, I did forget and want to mention when you do. Um, Import these, right? All right. We're going to make sure this anti-aliasing is off. Because if it's on, it'll create some graduated um, colors on the borders of your boxes and will mess up how Tabletopia interprets it. So, again, make sure the anti-aliasing is off. All right. I want to make sure to include that. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and create a tile for this object. And, again, making the front this. And then this is where we'll do our magnetic maps. So, I'm going to go ahead and upload our map here like so. All right, now you notice that this has little check boxes and you can choose what objects for this to interact with. So as I'm sure you have your own game, you can see which objects would be work with what you want to do your magnetic maps and, to, and not include the ones that you don't want to uh, magnetically map to that object. So normally we put a file in here and save it, but since I've already done it, we'll go ahead and skip on that. And I've actually already created a setup um, to, to show you how these magnetic maps work. All right. So you notice that, again, this should be face up and this should be face down. So we're going to try that out here. Yep, oh, yep, face down and face up. Now you notice I said earlier, if the orientation is upside down, it'll keep that orientation, right? Like so. Now, notice we add this line to this white area, so it should make this right side up. And if we drop that there, you can see that it worked perfectly. You know, you know um, the reason I made these different sizes is to show you how the magnetics work. So in order for something to snap, at the center of the object must be over um, the region that you want to snap to. So for instance, in this creates a large net. I can snap almost any, you know, snap a larger area and get it to snap. These are a little more precise. Um, with this being small, I have to get the center exactly over it or it won't snap. So I'm sure you can see how that works. 
Now, because I didn't exclude anything to interact with the magnetics, um, these cubes here will work, and this coin will work as well. And you notice it does stack them awkwardly uh, in the area. So it's so obviously not clearly ideal for resources, but I just wanted to use that as an example. Um, so I, I hope you find this informative. I hope you see how this could work um, in your game and help you out. So if you want to leave any comments or have any questions, feel free to view the comments below. Visit our Facebook page, um, also in the comments below, or my design blog, which again, in the comments below. Um, I hope you have a great day and uh, great gaming.